The document menu is a very important menu in Finale um, because on the one hand you can manage several um, options and on the other hand you can access each part. Um, of course at its core I think you don't have to explain that but when you see edit part um, a new menu pops up and you find the several parts and you see there are shortcuts which um, allows you to select each part in a very um, um, short, a very short and very um, fast way and um, just give you an idea I'll add another staff let's say it's, it'll be a piano and with command E I can go between um, the page view and the scroll view and if I'd not like to go to the part I just have to press alternate command and then um, period and period and comma, you may see it goes right to the other um, part. Okay, manage parts, it's a very important menu as well because it gives you the possibility to um, create several parts and to, um, yeah, to set the preferences for the part creations. And for instance, I'd like to generate a new part um, you see here with double clicking on here it generates all parts but if I'd like to generate a single new part I just double click new part then I name it let's say a sample part and now I can decide which steps I'd like to include in this part by just clicking here and moving it to the staff and um, there are several other options which are very interesting like specify voicings and that's something I'd like to show you. Um, let's go to the full score and imagine I'm just entering a very simple melody in layer 1. Okay, and now I switch to layer 2 by hitting alternate command in 2. You can of course click here but the shortcut is much faster and um, let's just enter a different melody like this one um, I don't pay attention too much to what I'm actually entering okay and um, when I go to the document manage part menu again and I go to my new part I can specify for instance that in this particular part only the notes in layer 1 are shown and that's very useful for instance if you want to um, yeah, separate part, but you have a single line. Let's let's say you entered the flute one and two on one single line using layer one, layer two, and then you can say, okay, in um, this particular part, I only want to show the layer one, or I only want to show the top note, or I want to show selected notes. That's very interesting. Um, so keep a keep an eye on that function. It's very useful. So let's go ahead. Um, page format. You see. If I double click here, I can um, specify the particular um, preferences for the uh, full score and for the parts. Um, that's very useful before you create all parts and you find also this information, let's say here, part creation preference in, at least for the parts here. No? Okay. So, um, data check. I don't want to cover, but I think it's very obvious what you're going. You are, you can check the fonts, you can check file maintenance, and you can reconvert percussion note types. Um, that makes, for instance, sense. Let's uh, imagine you have prepared a part um, which used um, very uh, sh uh, shapes for uh, percussion or diamonds for percussion notes, and now you want to switch it back to regular notation. Then you can use this. Um, uh, file management, but I must confess to you that actually I'm not using this uh, command so often. Usually I stick to a particular uh, plugin um, collection which uh, Jerry Williamson prepared. You can download from his um, website, and you see here there are several um, plugins called Change, and it's usually better to use these, but I'll cover that later. Okay, um, display and concert pitch, that's very important. I mean, that's the command which you use to um, switch between uh, transposed and concert view. Show repeats for part and show active layer only are very important commands. So, for instance, imagine you only want to 
um, to copy the second layer here, what you would do is um, you um, select show active layer only and I um, created a shortcut for this, this is in my case it's control A and now you can see okay only the active layer 2 is shown and then I can use this tool for instance I can select something and copy it to somewhere else and when I go back and hit um, show active layer only again I'm seeing all layers so it's very useful it's kind of a filter um, function but it's uh, a very uh, yeah a very so very fast filter function. Okay, playback record options and sync and video options. Um, I think that's obvious. Um, you see here, um, you can select various options for playback and record. And notice that the sync and video options soon will be replaced in the new finale version uh, through the support of Rewire, so you won't have. A video window anymore but you can use rewire together with another sequencing software and I think that's much more useful than it used to be. Okay, category designer. Um, you see these are the default categories and here I can change for instance the font and also the, uh, the font for instance for the music and the text and I can change the position, the justification, whatever and of course I can create my own categories, which is very useful. So, for instance, imagine um, you see here, tempo marks is usually um, something that uh, shows, um, yeah, commands or let expressions like um, allegro or quarter equals 140, and um, it's combined with a score, particular score list. So the reason why, for instance, it only shows up at the top is because you can select here that it's shown only on the top staff or the bottom staff and that's very useful for instance imagine you are working on a orchestral score and you want to have um, the tempo mark not only on the top staff but for instance um, right below the percussion the timpani sync or above the string section then you can create or modify your score list and um, Let's say I'd like to um, create my own um, category like technique. So I duplicate it and I just say sample. And now I can specify, for instance, a new font. And I can use um, also uh, change all these justifications of stuff. And when I now hit the expression tool and I enter it, I have my own um, expression. Or category and I can create now let's say hello voila there we go and you see the reason why I used um, an existing category is because it gives me a particular positioning and uh, this is very useful for starting okay added measure number region this is something uh, which is sometimes a mystery for Finale um, users. Um, let's say you have a piece that consists of different movements or you have for instance um, a piece which starts with a chorale and then you want to start or you have another movement, um, let's say a variation and the measure numbering shall start again. So how it works is, let's go to the scroll wheel. By the way, what's happening here, that's a macro, which I created on my own, so I don't have to use this tool to shift it. That's very useful. Um, <coughs> okay, this is measure one, this is measure two, three, four. And I can um, create a new region, let's say, okay, this first region only includes measure one, two, four, and it starts with number one, and then I add another region, and this includes measure, let's say, 5 to 10. And it starts again with measure number 1. And in the score, you can see what's going on. Let's say here. You see it's 1. Oh, sorry, I think I forgot something. Um, okay. There we are. 
and here now you can see it, it's measure one. One is hidden because I specified it like this. One, two, three, four, and now it starts recounting with a new measure number. Um, okay, a pickup measure is obvious what is going on. So if you have a pickup, you can specify the pickup. But let me show you how you can enter a pickup in within a score, let's say later in a score. So you highlight this measure, sorry, not this tool, you have to use um, this tool, the time signature tool. Okay, let me do it. So, and you double click. And you have to click on more option and it shows you a new option, use a different time signature for display. So, for instance, you don't want to evoke the creation or the notion that um, the time signature has changed. But let's uh, imagine here there should be a new pickup and the pickup is only a quarter note, then you can change here this measure to 1-4. You tell him, okay, it's only a measure 12 and still use a different time signature for display. Okay, and what happens is in this measure you can only enter a quarter note no? and the other but you don't see that there was a time signature change and that's particularly useful for the last measure of a piece if you had an initial pickup so let's imagine you had a 4-4 four four with a um, quarter note pickup then the last measure should be of course a 3-4 um, and when you hit here you see the finale still spaces like this so it's then the same procedure, you double click here and I hope you like the sound of my um, clock by the way and um, you see here use a different time signature display and hit OK and now the measure is easily or evenly spaced for this um, three quarter note or the started half note uh, value. Okay, set a default music font, I mean Finale offers you several music fonts like um, Maestro, Engraver, Jazz Font or Broadway Copyist. There are some other fonts which you can buy from um, yeah, other distributors like Newsgraph. I mean, I really like um, a called font Vienna. Look here. Um, where do we find it? Da. Is it Vienna? Yeah, there we are with Vienna. And what you see is now if I hit OK, it models the the font that uh, was used in SCORE, which was a very prominent um, professional music and grazing software in the 80s. And there are still some users who stick to it because of its beautiful music layout. Um, there's also an, another font um, available, which is called Fraura. So let's say here, and Fravora is um, basically a copy of the new font which Dorico is going to use. So if you want to have that lovely, beautiful output of Dorico, although it's not still available, then you can just switch to this um, font. Okay, uh, and document options. I mean, look here, there are so many options you can specify here. So it's not useful um, that I explain each writer but just to make sure that I have covered some look here lines and curves um, don't use all these funny measurements use the Enigma virtual positioning unit and um, I'm not sure whether that's the right uh, abbreviation but it's at least um, a unit that is um, based upon the, the program uh, Enigma interface that Finale uses for the display and music layout of its um, score. Um, by default, the resolution is medium. That's actually very bad. I would always set it to high. And I would slightly change these values to a higher since it gives you a much thicker score, and even if you, uh, particularly if you're using a large score for an orchestral score, for instance, and you have very tiny little uh, staffs, it really helps the reader to identify the output. Okay, um, one thing I also like to tweak is, um, let's say, where do we find it? It's bar line. If you look at the Urtex editions by Hainle, you will notice that 
the bar line is always slightly heavier and thicker and that's something you can change here I mean uh, the thin line thickness let's just set this to 12 this is way uh, too large but how, just look how it looks like so you see 12 is a bad value but I suggest that you are using something like 4 or 5 and let's say 5 I mean this gives you a nice looking um, bar line and this is very useful okay uh, what else um, so far what I usually always do is that I set the default music font I am decide okay I want to use Fravura or I want to use Maestro which is the default font and I, then I tweak the size look here I set it to 26 and it's very obvious what's going on here because it just slightly enlarges each sign of um, the font and again this is very useful for um, the printing out of a score it makes it look okay and if you have other questions just always keep in mind you have a very uh, well uh, documented user manual you have a quick reference guide you can also look at the you know, tutorials and you can of course um, yeah, search through the internet and look at the YouTube tutorials um, so this was the document menu